Okay, so welcome to our call tonight. We are going to be planning a 12-week year. And if you are not familiar with what a 12-week year is, um, it is a way of setting goals, and it is a way of um, making plans that actually move the needle and that help you to make progress on your overarching goals for your life. Because what was found is that if you make um, plans for the entire year, that's a really long time. It's really hard to stay focused. It's really hard to feel momentum. It's really hard to stay in it when you know you've got 12 months to accomplish something. So a year is too long, but a month, 30 days, it's just not a lot of time to really get much done. So the concept of a 12-week year became really, really effective. And I read this book. It's actually called The 12-Week Year. I highly recommend that you get it. And I read it at the beginning of the year, and I loved it. I started implementing it into my own life, into my own business, and it's been fantastic. Over the summer, about the third quarter of the year, uh, we were traveling a lot. And I just kind of let it drop. And so now I'm really excited to jump back in. And I thought I would just do a crash course for you guys on what the 12-week year looks like. And if you have a notebook, I highly recommend that you get it out. If you don't, I recommend that you grab a piece of paper or something to write with because this is going to be an interactive um, call. And now I don't necessarily expect for you to have your whole 12 week year planned out by the end of this call, but I would like you to get started on brainstorming some ideas, taking some notes, so that when this call is finished, either you can take half an hour afterwards, depending on what time zone you're in, or you can take some time tomorrow, and you've already sort of got the ball rolling and some thoughts written down for you to go ahead and plan out that 12 week year for yourself. So you're definitely gonna want to write some things down. So now why would, why do we even set goals? Let's just start all the way at the very beginning because I really like to set this as a foundation. Why do we set goals in the first place? Um, you know, there's nothing sadder to me than a girl who regrets not having the courage to throw her hat in the ring. And I don't want any of us, myself included, to feel that regret that I never even threw my hat in the ring. I never even gave myself a fighting chance to go after my dreams and to go after what I want out of life. And a lot of times it's the start that stops us. Or if you do jump right in and you didn't plan well, you can get really overwhelmed and really lost really quickly. So I want you to, instead of thinking, you know, when you have those dreams, when you have those inspirations, when you have those moments of vision and clarity, instead of thinking of all the reasons why it won't work, I want us to be the kind of women who are solution oriented and who think of all the reasons why it can, who come up with at least three reasons why this is something that we should invest our time in and what that we should do. And I know so many of you guys, and I know that this is more than just a business. This is a ministry. This is, this is a calling. This is a, a life's vision. And you know, we really, guys, we only have one life. We cannot afford to play small. We cannot afford to live small. You have so many gifts to offer the world, and you owe it to yourself and to, I believe, to your creator. We, we were at this retreat, and this one girl said, God's gift to us is our vision and our talents, and our gift back to God is using them to the best of our abilities. And so I just, I don't want any of us to get to the end and say, you know what? I let fear hold me back. And I let overwhelm, or I let laziness, or I let discouragement, or I let someone else's opinions keep me back from what my calling in life was to be. So let's think about coaching as running a marathon, if you will indulge me. I have never run a marathon, and I am not a runner, but my sister does. And I have lots of friends who do. And let's say that you were to come to me and you were to say, Vanessa, I want to run a marathon. I know that God's called me to it. I know that I want to do it, and I'm going to run a marathon. And I say, great. Let's see where you're at. Why don't you go out and just run for a little bit? Now, if you're anything like me, when I first started running, 
this was back when I had my second child and I was like, I need to get back in shape. So I did some running and I was never a runner, but I downloaded this couch to 5k app. If you've ever used the couch to 5k app, it starts you off running for a grand total of 30 seconds. Yes. You walk for a minute and you run for 30 seconds and then you walk for a minute and you run for 30 seconds. And let me tell you, those 30 seconds were not easy for me. Like I, at the end of those 30 seconds, was like, <gasps> oh my gosh, good, now I can walk, you know? And 30 seconds was literally all I could do. And that was day one. Now, if I would have finished that day one and thought, oh my gosh, I have to run 26 miles? I have to run a marathon? I can't do this. I'm not, like, I can barely run 30 seconds. And I walk away and I say, you know what? This is not for me. I can't, I'm failing. If I went out and tried to run a marathon on day two, I would fail. I would probably die. <laughs> I would not finish the marathon because I was not trained. I was not ready. My lungs were not strong enough. My endurance was not strong enough. My mindset was not strong enough. My legs were not strong enough. But you know what marathon runners do? You know what that 5K app did for me? it slowly increased the intervals. And on, in a few days, I was running a minute and walking 30 seconds, and I had switched. And then I remember the first time I did like an eight minute stretch of no stops in my running. And I ran for eight minutes without stopping, and I felt so proud of myself. And then I remember a 10 minute stretch, and then I remember 15, and then I remember the first day that I ran for 30 minutes straight. I think it took me like a month or maybe a little more to get to the point where I was running 30 minutes straight without stopping to walk. And I felt like an athlete, you know, like I'm running and in my mind, I'm like imagining myself just like taking these strides, you know, just running through my neighborhood. Of course I didn't look like that, but in my mind I was like, oh, but even still at that point I was maybe running between two and three miles right, in those 30 minutes. Not a fast runner. I would be shocked if I was running a 10 minute mile. And what is a marathon? A marathon is 26 miles. So I can be discouraged. I could look not at what I had accomplished going from 30 seconds to 30 minutes. And I could look ahead and say, oh my gosh, I can't run 26 miles. I'm only running two or three right now. Forget it, forget it. And I feel like a lot of this is very similar to coaching. I feel like a lot, of, uh, a lot of us come into coaching with zero experience or knowledge on how to run a business, how to share a story, how to get our own health in order, how to do time management, how to build relationships with people, how to lead others, how to communicate in a way that is clear and concise and compelling. We have zero, we are like that, we are like me, that could barely run 30 seconds without needing a break. And we want to run a, mar a marathon. We want to take this business to the end. We want to be six-figure earners, or we want to get out of debt, or we want to retire our husbands, or we want to make this a full-time income. And after a month, when we're still not there, it's like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. But what's the reality? The reality is I could run a marathon if I wanted to. Physically, there is nothing keeping me from running a marathon because I know women who are in their 60s who have run marathons. I know women who have disabilities and pain and all sorts of things that I don't have who have run marathons. Physically speaking, there is nothing keeping me from running a marathon, but I can't run it tomorrow. And I probably can't even run it in a month. But what marathon runners do is they have these training calendars. And they tell you when to run your long runs and when to run your short runs. And they gradually stretch you. And at the end of those train, I don't know how long it is, maybe three months. I I'm not even sure. My one of my friends is training for, if you guys know, let me know. One of my friends is training for a half marathon. And, and every day it tells her exactly how long to run and how long to walk and all of those things. And at the end of it, she can run a marathon. And I feel like it's the same with coaching, guys. You're not going to go out and run even an eight minute stretch. Like <laughs> it took me forever just to run that eight minute stretch without walking. But if you have a plan and you follow the plan, there is nothing keeping any of you 
from being that top coach that you want to be. It's going to just take consistency, belief, and time. And so that's what we're doing with our 12 week year right now, guys. We are setting a plan that is going to take you from one point to the next. Now, before I go into the nitty gritty of how to get this plan set in place, is running a marathon, here's my question, is running a marathon even your goal as a coach? And what I mean by that is, is being a six figure earner or being a top ranked coach or building a giant team, is that even a goal of yours? Um, because some people, they start running and they think they want to run a marathon and then they, they're like, you know what? Actually, I just want to like run three to five times a week. I really love running. I can run for half an hour without stopping now. I'm feeling really comfortable in that. So that's all I want to do. I just want to be able to run three to five times a week. And that's totally fine. Um, and what I would like you to do, and this is where I want you to take out your journals. I want you to discover this for yourself. How do you want to feel in life? How do you want to feel? What, what is that feeling that you are chasing after? And at the retreat that we went to, there was a whole list of words. I wish I could share them with you, but there are things like words like confident, empowered. There were words like abundant and alive. There were words like brave. There were words that were like, wholesome and peaceful and, and um, grounded, organized, um, vibrant, um, wild, tons of words. And we just kind of scanned over them and words that would pop out to us, we just kind of highlight. And, and over time, we were able to narrow down to each of us finding sort of one or one or two words. When you figure out that word, um, that's gonna be everything when it comes to setting these 12 week years. Because, and I talked about this in a video that I did uh, while I was actually in Utah about redefining success. Okay, because um, if you are chasing after a goal that someone else is putting on top of you, um, it doesn't have to be just one word. But if you're chasing after a goal that someone is putting on top of you or that you feel like when you look around at everybody else, well, everybody else, is hitting success club. Everybody else is hitting this certain rank. Um, you know, beach body, the beach body ladder says, I need to be here, here, and here. And those are all helpful things, right? It's good to have a next step. We always wanna know sort of what the next step is. But until you know what your word is that you are trying to achieve with your life, you could get to the very top of the beach body ladder and still not feel like you actually made it unless you know what that word is and you achieve that goal with that word in mind. I know this is a little abstract. Let me give you an example specifically to me. And I want you to like let the wheels be turning in your mind and try and figure out what that would mean for you. And again, you don't have to have all the answers by the end of this call, but I'm just putting that out there to get the wheels turning. So for me, for example, as I sat and I thought, the word that I wanted to feel was abundant. I wanted to have abundance in my life, which meant I didn't want scarcity anymore. I didn't want the constant record in my mind saying, I don't have enough time. I'm not good enough. I don't have enough challengers. I don't have enough coaches. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. And that's been the constant in my mind. And I said, I that's, I'm done with that. I want abundance in my life. I want to have a feeling that I am living, running my business, taking care of my children, loving my spouse with abundance. So once I knew that word, that doesn't mean that I'm, you know, it really, in one sense, it doesn't really have anything to do with how I go after my beach body goals. My beach body goals could be the same, but knowing what that word is gonna help me know how to go about getting there. And so for me with abundance, what brings me abundance was my second question. So if you want to write down, what's going to bring me to that word, to that feeling? And for me, what's going to bring me to abundance was helping my challengers and my team find success. That, will, that would make me feel so much abundance. Providing real value to my followers so that they come to me for help because I have already provided so much for them. That is, to me, abundance. 
expanding my reach on social media, having an abundance of followers, of people that I am able to consistently pour into, and executing, um, executing my to-do list with focus. It's gonna make me feel like I have plenty of time to do all the things that I want to do because the things that I want to do are focused to the few instead of wildly expanded to a million things. Because the truth is I don't have time to do a million things, but when I focus down, I can feel like I have an abundant amount of time to get this much done. And I can feel centered. So knowing what my word is helps me to figure out what's gonna get me to feel that way. And once I had those things, I could take them one by one and pull out actionable items that I could take real like steps to do, something concrete that every day I could sit down and say, this is what I want to do. And let me, you know, before I did this, my goals, instead of helping my challengers find success and my team find success, my goals were hit success club five and hit this next rank, right? Like I'm a two-star diamond, I want to be a three-star diamond, or I'm a four-star diamond, I want to be a five-star diamond, or I have hit success club five, I want to hit success club 10. The problem is I could sort of force those numbers without actually helping my challengers and my team see success. And hitting those numbers, there's a million ways that I could get there. But when I focus on my word of abundance, then helping my challengers and team find success takes on so much more meaning and it becomes a joy to do instead of I'm chasing after some sort of far off goal. I hope this makes sense. And if you guys have been with Beachbody for a while, I think you'll understand that this shift is everything. It's life-giving. It's a different way of thinking things. And what I have found is that when I am focused on the word and the feeling and the emotion that is most important to me, the results come, right? If I am abundantly expanding my network, if I am abundantly helping challengers and my team find success, I'm gonna rank advance. I'm gonna hit success club goals. But that is a result, not a number one focus. And so that's really the, the shift that I have had. Now, let's take that one particular, right? So I've got my word, I've got what will help me feel that way, and now I'm gonna take that and now bring it down to like, what do I actually do? So if I'm gonna help my challengers and my team find success, well, what helps them find success? Well, for my team, it's team calls. So that's a concrete thing that I can put on my calendar, I can plan for, and I can execute. I'm doing it right now, right? <laughs> like I took time this afternoon to plan for it, and I am leading right now with my team calls. The next thing I can do to help my challengers and team find success is one-on-one -on -one mentorships. So I, I literally put on my calendar, every week I wanna connect with three challengers and three coaches. And I put dates and times to these. This is where the rubber meets the road, guys. This is where you look at that marathon training and it says run for five minutes today. Boom. Like that is so specific and you can just get up and do it. So connect with three challengers each week. Connect with three coaches each week. I literally wrote down their names for this week, the three coaches and the three challengers I want to connect with. And I have a date and time. On Wednesday is when I'm going to connect with my coaches, and on Saturdays are when I'm going to connect with my challengers. And I know it sounds like so tedious and simple, but guys, I've got four kids. They're with me all the time. <laughs> I'm homeschooling them, and I've got my brain going at a million miles an hour. And for me to just open up my agenda for the day and say, oh, today is Wednesday. Today I'm connecting with, uh, with Marlon, Alicia, and, and Leisha. And, and then I can just go to your guys' pages and just pour out love to you and know that I am living in abundance, leading with abundance, helping my team find success. And it's not like if I remember or if I feel like it or if I find time, I'll reach out to one of my coaches. And it's not like constantly in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh crap, I haven't reached out to my coaches in a while. I really got to do that. Oh man, I haven't done this in a while. I really got to do that. And that's where that scarcity always comes into my mind of I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. If you feel like you're constantly not doing enough, 
I think it might be because you don't have a concrete plan that you are following and that you feel secure in. Because when I have a concrete plan and I know that I'm connecting with three coaches every week, then I feel like I'm not not doing enough. I'm doing exactly according to my plan. It's a good plan. It's a plan that's gonna get me to my goals and my goals are to feel abundant. Like I am abundantly helping my team, okay? So, you know, a couple other things that I wanna do to help my team and find success, the mentorships, recognition, making sure that I'm recognizing you guys, that I'm recognizing my challengers and leading from the front in gratefulness. I want to be more grateful for my team that I have. I feel like constantly, I would always be thinking, oh, I need to recruit more. I need to help my team see more success. I need to help my challengers see more success. I need to find more people to help. And yes, I do need to do that. But if I'm doing it from a place of scarcity, I'm going to constantly be feeling like, again, not enough, not enough, not enough, as opposed to doing it from a place of gratefulness. And every morning I wake up, I am grateful for that challenger. I am grateful for that conversation. I am grateful for that coach. And then my work comes out of a place of gratitude. And I feel like I have abundance and I'm moving into more abundance instead of never being grateful and always feeling like I need more and I'm not enough and, and, and hustle, 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 and I'm out of breath and I can't do it. And it's, again, it's these subtle shifts that are just amazing, amazing. Okay, so another one that I want to do in order to live abundantly and run my business in a way that is abundant is I want to provide great value to my followers. And so that's kind of like, right, I wish I could show you guys. I wish I could like write it out for you, but it's kind of, imagine it's sort of like a pyramid, right? You've got your word at the top. Abundance is mine, whatever your word is. And then you've got what would make me feel that word. And for me, it was helping my challengers find success, helping my team find success, and adding lots of value to my following, right? So that's great. We've got to take it one more level. What exactly do I need to do to make that a reality? And so if I'm looking at adding value, I, I, want, to, I want to blog. But how often do I want to blog? You know, really making it specific because, again, I found for me, if I don't have a specific action, then I'm constantly gonna feel like I'm not enough. And I can't tell you how many times I have sat down and on my to-do list it says blog. And I'm constantly like, oh crap, I haven't blogged enough. Oh crap, it's been so long since I've blogged. Oh man, I'm not blogging enough. I'm not blogging enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. And when I sat down and I made out my 12 week year, I know exactly how many blog posts I want to do in the next three months. And I know exactly the days. I have days that I'm going to do um, brainstorm ideas. So tomorrow, for example, I have no babysitter, which is a challenge. And so I'm taking the kids to Chick-fil-A. They're going to run around in the playground. And I am going to brainstorm for 10 or 15 minutes a bunch of ideas that I can blog about later. I'm not going to blog while they're in Chick-fil-A because I know there are certain things I can do while they're playing in the playground and certain things I can't. Certain things that require a little more focus than others, but I can certainly brainstorm ideas while I'm yelling at the kids, hey, be careful, hey, don't do that to your sister, hey, you know, watch out. Um, I can brainstorm some ideas, right? And I know that blogging has to be broken down into smaller steps. I have to come up with an idea. I have to find time to write out the content. I have to find time to get the graphics together. And then I have to find time to promote the blog when it's written. So knowing that I have all those things, I build it into my schedule. I know tomorrow I'm brainstorming. I know Wednesday night is my content creation night, you know? And so it's just, instead of just having blog on my to-do list and constantly feeling like I'm not blogging enough, I'm not blogging enough, but it's never getting in my calendar. It's never actually written, broken down to those smaller steps. Um, I feel like it's just so much easier to follow a plan when I actually have a plan, <laughs> not just a, I wish I could do this, but an actual plan. Um, a couple other things that I'm going to do for my blog is recycling old blog posts and then like having those content creation nights because I found that I was trying to think of blog post ideas during the time that I was doing my power hour 
and it was distracting me and causing me to be unfocused in my power hour and never actually getting blogs done at the same time. So I'm done with that. And it's my power hour time. It's my power hour time. And once a week on Wednesday nights, that's my content creation time. And I can just be free, let my mind go, content create without feeling like, oh, but I got to do my power hour. I've already done that. It's over. Okay. So those are just a few examples of how I'm taking my word, taking it down into things I want to have happen, and then really bringing that down into actual actionable items. Now, one of the resources that I'm using is this journal. It's called the Self Journal. And I mentioned it in our team page along with the 12 week year. You don't have to get this. I, and you may be able to just do this without the journal. There's nothing magical about the journal. It just organizes things really well. And the way that the journal is set up is it gives you a space at the beginning. It's set up to help you track 13 weeks, which is a little, one, one extra than 12 weeks. It gives you like a bonus week in the 12 week year. And at the very beginning, it has this section where you write down what your objective is for each of the 12 weeks, okay? So for example, let's talk about blogging. If my goal is to provide good content creation, because that will make me feel abundant, then I need to know how many blogs I want to do in this 12 week period. Let's say that I wanna do one blog a week, so that's 12 blogs. Um, so I can break that down every single week that I want to write one blog and maybe one week it's a new blog, maybe the second week it's recycling an old blog. So that gives me a little bit of space with my content creation. But every week I am providing to my audience a blog post, whether previously written or currently written, because that's going to give them so much value. That's going to make me feel abundant. And P.S. Success Club points will come from that. And P.S. Coaches will come from that, but that's not my main focus. My main focus is serving my audience and bringing them great content. So I, I've planned it out, guys. Week one, I know what my blog post is. Week two, I'm recycling an old one. Week three, I know what my blog post is. Week four, I'm recycling an old one. Week five, I don't know, but I have my blog brainstorm session tomorrow to fill that in. Right, so everything is planned out. Now, I hope this isn't overwhelming for you guys. If you're not a natural planner, I know that it can be. But really, all you're doing is breaking things down to the smallest steps, and then plugging that step into a day and a time. There's so much freedom in that, guys. When I, when I uh, went to this retreat, we listened to a podcast on the truth about burnout, which I'm gonna share with you guys in the team page. And it was phenomenal. She said, so many people feel burned out, but in reality, they're actually overwhelmed. They're not burned out. They're overwhelmed because when they sit down, they are reacting instead of having proactively planned and simply executing. I know for me, this happens all the time. I sit down, like I told you guys, and I'm thinking, okay, I really got a blog. I haven't blogged much, but I also should reach out to my coaches because I don't know what's going on with so-and-so and this person. And man, that girl hasn't checked into my challenge group in a while, so I need to check up with her. And oh gosh, I've got to put out a post tonight. What am I going to post about? Oh man, you know, like I should post a healthy meal, but I didn't have a healthy meal tonight because I didn't plan my meals this week. And so you, you can see how not planning turns you into a reaction machine, which turns your brain into always putting out fires and in emergency mode. And that is exhausting. You cannot live in emergency mode and have a clear mind that moves with purpose through your business. I'm saying that because I've been there. <laughs> Whenever I'm in emergency mode, I'm just putting out fires and I'm constantly not feeling like enough and I am feeling overwhelmed and that's when I start to feel like oh, I'm burned out. I can't do this. I can't do this. And it's like the marathon runner going out on day two, trying to run for 30 minutes straight and puffing and puffing and like, I can't do this. Of course you can't because you haven't followed the plan that is going to move you towards your goal. So, where do we go from here? I would love for each of you at the minimum to know what your word is by the end of this week and to know at least have two to three things that are going to help you feel like you are accomplishing that word, like the abundance that I had. And then 
helping my challengers and my coaches see success and providing great value to my audience, right? So I have my word and my two things. Don't even feel like you have to go down into the details if you don't, if that's too overwhelming, but at a bare minimum, I would like you to know your word and what will help you feel like you are accomplishing that word, okay? And surprise, surprise, as you do that, you may automatically start thinking about things that you can do to accomplish that because that's just the way our brains work, right? Like if you are, if one of your goals is to provide great value for your audience, you might all of a sudden just think like, man, what if I did like a 30 day free group on prayer where we pray every single day about something in our lives? Like, you know, the, the mind is naturally creative when you give it a direction. When everything is open, our minds kind of shut down. But when you give your brain like a specific direction, how can you provide value to your audience? It kind of just starts going off on its own. So don't feel like you have to come up with all the nitty gritty details, but you may want to just keep a page open in your notebook because that might come automatically for you. Um, it's really gonna, it's really gonna open up. Um, yeah, so I have a few more things, but we're running out of time. So I think that's good for um, right now. The last thing that you need in a 12-week year, and this is what I love about the self-journal, is you need to be able to track your activity so that you know if you're executing or not. Just like that marathon calendar, you know, you got to print it out so you can actually exit off as you're going through and see where you're at. And if you're falling behind, if maybe you need to sign up for the marathon a couple months <laughs> later and not the one you originally wanted to, you know? Um, so in this particular, uh, uh, let me flip to a blank page so you don't see all my chicken scratch. But in this particular journal, um, it's, it's really great. I love it. It's got a whole, you know, like a basically, you know, the time slot, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. where you can write out sort of your agenda. It's got a place for morning gratitude, which I am really, really big on right now. Um, it's also got a place for your goals. So let's say my goals are, you know, add great value and um, help my challengers and coaches see success. I want to write that out every single day. I want to make sure that that's burned into my brain. And then it's got your top three targets for today, right? So tomorrow, one of my top three targets is take the kids to Chick-fil-A and write out some blog ideas. Boom, like that's one of my top targets. And I know that because I know for the 12 week year what my targets are. Um, and then it's got a place for your wins, where you're gonna celebrate how good you did that day and a place where you go, you got some lessons that you gotta learn. Maybe you made a few mistakes, that's okay. You learn from those. And then at the end, a nighttime gratitude where you write down three things you're thankful for at night. And um, I love this journal. It is, it is wonderful. Um, at the end of each week, it's got even like a weekly overview where you can see how well you did in all of your different things. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna end here. Please, 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 if you can, I'd love for you to jump back on afterwards. I wanna hear from you guys and field any questions you might have um, because we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this as a team. We're gonna get after some goals. Um, goals that come from heart, not from external, what others are doing, what Beachbody says, what you feel like you have to do to feel like enough because you're enough just as you are today. But we still wanna go after goals because that just makes us grow. We wanna grow. Okay, so I'm gonna end it here and I will see you guys in just a second.